Welcome guys, it's Eastie and the Wolf. Just thought I'd do a quick video on this XTU uh, Intel tuning app in use with the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 i7 in Windows 10. What a package, eh? Now the, the, Pro, the Surface Pro 3 is an i7 2 core, so it's got half the cores as the normal i7, but it's packed in this absolutely ridiculously thin tablet device. <coughs> Excuse me. It comes with a keyboard that you can clip on and it's got the digitizer pen. It works really well. The problem is I got the the, the fast ones because I do a lot of uh, 3D modeling and stuff and I I do fly a lot now and then so it's great to have you know uh, a machine that I can actually do 3D modeling on on the plane and also play a few games and stuff. Now the problem with this device is uh, they've got an obvious problem with using such a fast chip in such a small uh, unit, and it's not just the problem that you know they can understand what the chip is in there and exactly what it can do. It's the fact that CPUs vary quite a lot when they're manufactured, and they don't, you know, they really don't know uh, the quantity of what are going to be at a certain performance level. So they have to check so many, and they have to look at the lowest possible performer. And they have to base the system on that. So you could have a chip that runs a lot lower temperature, could run a lot faster than it than it's going to, the, because they're going to set the, the the system up for it for the low, lowest possible chip that could come out of the manufacturing facility. And that's so some customer doesn't get one, and it just cooks itself, you know, overheats or works really bad. So the, the thing is here, we can download this free Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. And you can optimize based on your CPU. So you can not overclock it, but leave the performance as it is and turn down all the voltages. So depending on how well your compute your CPU performs, you can individually tune it so it's not using as much electricity and therefore not creating as much temperature, which this thing has a problem with. The reason it's a big problem because they introduced throttling with this, temperature throttling. So it will run at uh, full speed. I think this chip in here is a 3.3 gigahertz. So that's pretty crazy. I don't really see it running at that a lot. But when you're not using it, it will, it will go down to like 0.8 megahertz. So it drops, you know, over three times in speed. Now, if, if, you're, if you're playing a game, it will obviously want a max, not just a CPU, but the graphics card as well. I think this has a, a HD 5000 Intel integrated graphics card in there. And very quickly indeed because of this enclosure and there's a tiny little fan in there and it's got a wraparound vent but it's just not good enough to dissipate the heat and it will throttle itself straight away. Now the way to alleviate this a little bit with this tool is if you turn these voltages down as much as possible so the chip will still be stable and it's going to ge generate, as well as it's not going to use as much power, it's, it's going to generate a lot less heat. So it's not going to hit those throttling temperatures as soon, if at all, in, in some cases. And obviously gaming is probably going to always hit them because it's such demanding. But when I use this device, I have a lot of complaints because just when I'm drawing, like on a, on a sketcher, or just when I'm browsing, the thing's racing so high in temperature and it's just becoming like unusable. You can't even hold it sometimes it gets that hot. So anyway, using this tool, it's quite simple. I've got a... I, I've put the action cam here on the screen so you can see it. I'm going to put that in the top corner and I'll blow the main screen up here and I'll quickly show you this. So you can go in here and you can basically tweak all these settings. Now if you go in the options first, you'll have to basically turn on advanced tweaking and it'll ask you, do you want to do this because you could blow your, your chip up. Now this is meant for overclocking as well, so you can tweak the voltages up and you can tweak up your frequencies so you're giving the CPU more power to achieve certain performance. We're not doing that at all. All we're doing is we're going to leave the performance as it is and we're going to tweak down the, the current it's providing which is in millivolts and if it gets unstable it can, it could reset the, the uh, surface but the chances are very unlikely that it will do any damage. I mean I've had a couple of times where I've pushed it right down and it will kind of crash the application and I'll just reset it and because extreme, the extreme turning utility is not, it's not saving anything to BIOS or anything like that, if you restart, it will just uh, go back to default uh, speeds and you know, the, all the settings will be the same as uh, when you bought it. 
you know, there may possibly, I think it's very remote that it could damage, you know, you could get some like uh, on the uh, hard drive failure on the SSD. But I say I don't think so. I've read a lot of the forums, people doing this, and no one's had any problems. So it's a really, really safe tweak for you to try. Anyway, I'll quickly go through. As I say, we're not touching any of the performance of the, of the CPU or the graphics card. We're just pushing down the, vo the actual voltages. So up here we've got core voltage, which we just leave alone. And we've got dynamic CPU voltage offset. Now this is a zero to start off with. And here you can see I've tweaked it. Well, I'll go back to the uh, default profile. So on here we have, on the bottom of profiles, and then we can click on the default, show values. And it'll come over here and it'll have all the values. So if I click, click apply, now we've gone back to as the service was provided. So we can go back to manual tuning. So we can see over here now on the first option that we can change is the dynamic CPU voltage offset. So that's zero. So you want to change that to minus to play with it. And you want to start off, I'd say, with like 20 or 30 millivolts and then just keep playing with it. And only do one setting at a time. Don't go through and change them all because if, if you do have a problem, it's going to be very difficult to know which it is. And I would really start from the top of these and work your way down. And you can leave, so, so this chip has turbo boost on it, and it has short power and regular power. Now these are both at 25 watts, so this is when the thing is like throttling, it's, you know, it's accelerating up to, to give more performance. This is what voltage, so this is something you can tweak down as well, but again I do them individually. And then I left, completely left the turbo boost timing there. The cause is actually the performance of the chip, so if you turn that down, you're going to reduce the performance, which is not what we want to do at the moment anyway. And uh, then we got ratio, I'll leave that going because it's performance of memory cache. And then the actual voltage for that, we can tweak that down. And then graphics. Now to me, the graphics chip in this is kind of a little bit pointless for this device. I mean, okay, yeah, with games, it's pretty good for an integrated graphics card. But it generates so much heat, it hinders the CPU so much, that even in regular usage, it, it's just killing the CPU. And if you think about it, a lot of the stuff we use is CPU only still. I mean, the graphics cards are amazing in games, like an NVIDIA or ATI, you know, powered uh, GPU games. They're, they're phenomenal. But if you do any, like, video editing, any 3D modeling, you know, drawing, browsing, it's all CPU. So it's kind of silly that we've got this graphics card, like it's like a bloody furnace in there, you know, heating the whole thing up and really heating up the CPU and... Uh, adding to that problem. So I've got maximum with a graphics card and I'll show you in my actual optimization when I play with it I actually turned down the performance of the graphics card too and I think that helped quite a lot. So you can tweak all those and when you tweak them over here you have apply and then you can save them and when you save them it actually saves them in the profile list. So you can see here I've created a few and I can show you something up front that you don't want to do because They've obviously spent a lot of time on all these functions and with this device, they've really tweaked everything and they've got it working pretty good. You know, so what we're going to change is not going to have drastic effects and you just turning everything off actually makes it worse, believe it or not, and I'll show you that. Now my optimized one is this guy. Now in this one, as I say, I've, turned the, I've actually turned down the ratio of the graphics card speed. So it's only going to be running at, uh, I think it's... 50 hertz rather than 600 and I did that because I went and tested it like that and I didn't see a lot of difference in a lot of the applications I use. Now I would think if you have this for a long time and you get used to using it you would have a different setting here for what, between what you're doing like if you're going to use it generally just for like sketching you really don't need it to be super fast. I mean I, I don't think the sketching tool I've tried it on literally low settings it really doesn't make any difference it doesn't get any delay or anything like that. If you're going to be doing obviously 3D modeling or gaming, you want it to be maxed performance, but you still want to optimize those voltage settings because you're not getting any benefit. If the chip can run at that speed at a lower voltage, it may, you may as well do that. And you're going to reduce the temperature and then you're not going to hit these throttling limits. So to me, that this guy is my optimized because I can run all my tools at uh, the same speed, but without hitting those throttle limits. Now if we look down at the graph, we've got CPU temperature obviously important and the graphics temperature. And you'll see as the graphics temperature goes up, it pushes up that CPU temperature. It's just, it must create so much heat. 
And then the thermal throttling is the one we want to avoid because that's the one that's going to really pull down our performance. So if that kicks in, you'll see the, the frequency of the CPU just drop dramatically. And then CPU utilization shows us what, you know, what the, the CPU is doing. So first I'll show you, I did this one, called it console the peasant. And this is basically with everything turned off, everything I could, maximum things, uh, voltages turned down, but then I turned all the extra settings off. And uh, I'll just apply that one. So you go to show values, hello, apply. And you can see over here it'll have the, what the settings are at the moment, and on the right I'll have the propose, so you can see the differences. So this is just uh, try and see if this doesn't crash the uh, the computer. I turned down all the ratios of the CPU and everything on this just to see if I could turn make it really really uh, a lot slower, which would be still fast for browsing the internet and stuff, but just make it very cool. Uh, I'll show you straight away how that works. Uh, we go to like stress test. I did apply that here. So we can do like a CPU stress test. And this stress test is not as good as, you know, it's kind of the, uh, uh, like the prime test. So, you know, they're really hardcore ones. But it, it does definitely push it. So if we, if we look at the moment, we're, we're averaging, we're at like just under 60 Celsius for both. And oh, something I have to warn about my testing on this. I'm actually, I'm stream, I'm recording this by streaming it through remote desktop, through a Google remote desktop. So that's going to be taking up uh, quite a bit. So yeah, by default, I've not got any pro any a a a activation activations, any programs that are doing anything running. But you can see I'm using 15% and my Wi-Fi because I'm running this over Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not as high as I would expect. Oh, I guess this is a technology where it only updates what's changing. So if we, uh, if we do that, it'll probably go up. Yeah, there we go, six meg. <laughs> so that works. And I set this up like this, so you can see on my main, on this big screen, I'll show you th this will be quite uh, low latency because it's over the Wi-Fi for a remote desktop. But you can see on my screen, it's it runs really, really fast. I mean, we'll get rid of that. Oh, this is a 3D Max, what I wanted to show, because it runs quite well. And, uh, oh yeah, this is, I'm running Windows 10, so this is the this is the configuration of the, of the chip. Because I don't know off the top of my head, it's uh, an i7-4650U, so I'm sure it's some kind of mobile version. It, it has only got two uh, processors. It says here 2.3, but I think with the turbo it goes to 3.3 because I've seen it. I've seen it say that 8 gig. Yeah, we're on Windows 64. We have got the pen and stuff in the end, but blah blah blah. So we'll get rid of that. So yeah, going back to this, this is the the one where I turned everything off, and we'll quickly. I'll say we're on 58 Celsius, so we'll quickly do a test and we'll see how this runs. So this is the uh, just a CPU stress test. And you see straight away the CPU has gone to 100%. Now the, the processor will, will be locked at 80, 80 hertz, gigahertz, sorry. So it's really not going to move anywhere. I mean, it's going to perform really bad. But I thought this might be okay for browsing and stuff like that. Because you, you can do all that with running at this speed. And you can see my settings over here. You could probably pause it if you wanted to try these. This was like the, the peasant setting for the, for the, for the computer. In my opinion, you know, this is how, you know, they've tried it with the throttling, obviously, and stuff. But I don't think it works right. I think they should say, okay, you're just using Chrome. You know, turn the power down. Oh, you're just using Word. Turn the power down. You know, not have it where, oh, you've hit 90, 100 degrees Celsius, turn the power down, because then it's too late. The thing's cooking in your hands. And uh, anyways, I'll stop that. That's enough. But you, you kind of get the gist of my uh, my argument. It's like much better to, to, to cut all the performance for what you're going to do and not create the heat, you know, and use the battery power. And... Uh, and now we'll go, I'll have a quick look, and then with this, I guess we, I can just show you uh, 
like a browsing thing and save some of my desktop for or well, maybe I didn't. Anyway, I'll show you a quick video. So, so you can see this is a, a video playing in HD off YouTube. So, with these with these low settings, we've got a, a HD video playing, and I'm streaming the desktop via Chrome. So it's kind of like most of our use could probably be like this. And then, you know, if we have a look at uh, get rid of that, and go back to this, we can see the temperature did go up, but it got up to like 60 Celsius. You know, so that's nothing when it, it was at 58. So we we really you know was doing something there quite good that probably predominantly what we use this for is you know browsing the internet and uh, YouTube HD videos probably the you know the higher end of that and uh, you know it's fine it's fine why not why not have it set at that and you can do that in here so you can have a profile you can have that and then you can just click it and it's that easy and apply now we'll go to. Uh, the problem with that with that setting is though, if we were in like uh, say 3D Studio, and uh, I use this a lot for modeling because I, you know, with, I'm an engineer so I uh, do a lot of 3D designs. But I don't use 3D Max. I don't use KT. I use 3D Max for uh, just for visualization stuff. I use KT as my main program. Yeah, I mean, it actually doesn't look too bad. It actually doesn't look too bad. It's kind of funny that it works so well in such a... I'm not used to using it on here at all. I'm used to, uh, I generally just use this for uh, the render farm, so I need, need it installed. So let's try... Uh, well, let's put the render mode on. The, Say clay. Yeah, I mean it is it is slower. Well, not too bad actually. It's pretty cool. And then we could look at like a, a drawing app. So yeah, there is a little bit of delay there. So I, I would prefer I would prefer to have it a, a bit faster for this maybe because it's actually behind my I don't know if you can see that it's behind my pen okay but yeah for for, my, for a lot of the stuff we're gonna do you know when we're using it for like traveling and stuff we could have it in these low settings so then I would go and say like my optimize now I said these were so show that and it should show us the difference. There we go. So over here you can see all the differences. So I, I dropped the clock speeds and it says it's going to go to full speed, you know, with turbo mode or whatever. I, I lowered the dynamic uh, voltage, which is probably higher than what it is now. And then so we can just apply that. And it's that easy, so you have different modes, you can just do that. I mean, this would be great if they had it in like Windows, you know, and you just had it on the side and like, oh, this mode, this mode, this mode. And a power saving mode doesn't quite cover that. So now I mean, uh, anyway, we can look at these graphs and just doing what we were doing in Studio, Studio Studio and whatnot. We hit uh, on the left; it's like real time as I move this back and forward. You can't see on the main screen; you can't see. But if I do this, you can see it. So I'm trying to see where it's like a pebble drop splash in the water. But you can't see my cursor. But anyway, on the left we have the the values from this graph. So you can see just messing around. Then we kind of hit 64. And if that's the highest we hit in anything, and that's and it, generally the CPU and the GPU are exactly the same. So with uh, I've now changed, all, I've applied that. So it was just basically click it, show values. Up here it comes up with in yellow what's going to change. You click apply, and that's it. It's as easy as that. And then uh, we could just like run that stress test again, just to see how different this is. I say what we really don't want here is this throttling to to kick in the very bottom uh, green line because that means our performance is going to be dropping the thing's going to be over here and it's really bad I only really see that when in default mode if I'm using it for a long time and I am like doing quite a lot of different stuff 
and it, it kind of runs away with itself. If you do get it overheated, it really struggles, you know. It's kind of, there's nowhere for the heat to dissipate. So the whole case and the whole structure of the, of the tablet gets hot. And it doesn't matter if you just stop using it even, it takes a while for it to cool down and for it to, to run normally again. So you really want to optimize these voltages. So we can see here on this stress test, it's uh, over here was the stress test we did on the regular. And now it didn't really move even. I mean, you can see here because before when we were doing nothing, or even over here we were doing nothing, it was like pretty much the same. So that was a pretty good setting actually for the stuff we wanted to do then. And now we're uh, we're hitting like 68, 64. But yeah, we've got no fan running, you know, so it's, it's all good. It's all good. I'm not going to complain about that. Generally, what I do is I, I mean, that's quite a, a high process as well. I don't think like drawing. We go back on here and. It's a high resource project, you know, if we, if we, uh, we draw something really pretty, I'm not an artist, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, but you can see now how real, uh, it's such a real, more real time now. So it's, uh, it's so nice. And this, I think this is the most hardcore resource hungry tool because it kind of like watercolor, it mixes it in there. And, uh, if we go to say uh, 3D Max, and we can look. Uh, it's much more fluid now. We'll probably like run the animation live, and there we go. So it's like a rain animation. And it's doing a lot live and move it around. And uh, even like do a render. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it should be okay. Hopefully it's not set too high. No, it probably is set to some sequence. Uh, let's put it a bit bigger than that. Okay. So I don't use this machine for render. I might run like a preview render off if I'm modeling up stuff, but I just think it's stupid to use something like this for rendering because you're going to murder it. It's the most high resource thing there is. There we go. So we look over here and it's actually doing all that stuff. It's really, really good. I mean, we're. You can see playing with the application, the drawing package, really didn't touch it. So it stayed at like 65 and stuff. And then even when we did the render, you can see the CPU went max because it's a CPU renderer. The only, in 3DS, like the, I think V-Ray is hardware and the, uh, there is a hardware renderer. What's it called? Let's find that out. Uh, where are you? Oh, it's right at the bottom. So if you go to assign renderer, oh, so we're not using the hardware one. So yeah, if we use uh, the NVIDIA ones are all software actually. It's kind of funny that. And uh, the Quicksilver one is the hardware one. So I mean, the NVIDIA ones may use the hardware, but they don't use it. Like if you look at your resource, uh, your CPU and GPU uh, load when you're rendering in 3ds, the Quicksilver one will use 100%. And the others, well, they'll use very, very small percent, then they'll match the CPU out. So when you're doing all your preview work, the, f the Quicksilver one's the best. Anyway, back to this, I'm waffling. So we can see that was that worked really, really well and uh, with, with those tools I did. And let's say this is just slightly optimized. You can see my uh, thing on the bottom. I don't know why. Oh, there we go, there's nothing else to see really. But you can see all my settings, so if you have a, remember this is an i7, they also do the i3, i5, Pro 3. But, uh, so if you, if you have one of those, these you, you could try and type these in straight away, you know, just to get a quick hit, and save it as whatever you want, and you, know, you can apply it. But remember to save your default, don't save over the top of your default. Because I'm not sure if it stores them, it stores your defaults anywhere else. So yeah, this is really good for me, I can do most stuff, and it keeps the temperature. And then we'll go back to default, and I'm not sure if it's going to even make a huge difference. Because we just, it, you know, the temperature does build up after a while, so we're just kind of hitting them now, and uh, very quickly. And we're doing our profiles, and then default, show values. So you'll see here uh, the differences. So yeah, the, I must have changed the turbo boost time window a little bit. I must have played with that, because that's going to change back to that. The, 
uh, this is going to go up to zero, the dynamic CPU, the processor cache voltage back to zero, uh, graphics ratio, I turn that down, uh, process, uh, graphics process voltage, and the frequency, I turn the dollars down. I say we get no performance difference, I don't believe. So now we've gone back to the default, this is as it comes out of the box. And I don't think just by doing nothing it's going to... I mean, we are doing something, we are streaming this to my main computer for recording. But uh, I don't know if... It's going to raise temperatures right now. So we'll try the stress test, see if that makes a difference. See if it compares. So we can look over here in the graph. This was when we did the stress test for my previous settings, my optimized settings. I don't know what the highest was there, it was like 67, 68, so we're at 69, 68, 69, so it's not, oh wait there, we're going up still, could have kind of leave it for the same distance, so this is exactly the same uh, performance, the only thing I did, I, I tweaked the graphics card down a little bit, but I don't think that made any difference with most of the stuff I use, because I'm not using that graphics card, but in games, maybe, maybe, so yeah, we're going to like to 71, and I was at 67, 68, so it's, uh, it's 5 Celsius, it's almost 10%, it's quite a bit, I hope to uh, 70, 73 max, but you can, you can visually see the difference. And I don't think it's going to get much more than that, and yeah, that's just for testing the CPU, stress testing the CPU, so it's not using the graphics card. Uh, what else did I do? Well, let's go and have a quick uh, play in here. Oops, shit. Part of my French. So, whatever I did, you know. <laughs> Happy cat. Big ears. And tail. Anyhow, so I kind of did these functions and. See, there's no delay still, and uh, it's really nice. Okay, so uh, I did like some. Uh, so having a look at that, did that really affect it? Nah, not really. You can see the CPU performance is kind of the same, and we're at 67, 67. So yeah, that drawing package doesn't really make a huge hit so you can see the you, you want the performance so it's more it's, it's more uh, la uh, no latency I should say but you uh, I mean it, using those big tools they do there is a tiny bit of latency maybe but using the smaller tools definitely not it's pretty good and uh, you probably see it on the main screen because it's streaming and 3D Studio so again, it's uh, and we can animate. Ideally, what I should really do is something really intense to like a big render and compare them both. So let's try this. This is just a small, quick render, really. Yeah, you can see it peaked a little bit there, but in comparison to 71 and 67, so it's like 4 Celsius, so it is a noticeable difference. Uh, let's try a big render, because uh, it may stack up, if we put this on, should we do 4K? I'm <laughs> I may have to fast forward the video here.
Okay, guys, you can see there, I've, uh, after the, just long renders, I'll fast fast sort of through them, obviously, there, uh, you can see the differences. So this is the default profile from uh, Microsoft. Yeah, they have, they have to take into account, you know, that the, the CPUs can be different, and they're not going to check every single one, and they, they can't really configure every computer differently, you know, and sell it, sell them at the same price, as the same product. So anyway, we've got uh, max, well, I won't go max, we've got this flat spot here, we've got 73, and then we dropped 66. So what's pretty cool is this really didn't change too much from over here when we were just messing around this into rendering. Good guys, run through crisis then. So this from the very start here all the way, I mean, I don't know when I changed, was it roughly like here? So you can see we actually got to like 74, 71, CPU 74, 71, and the highest here was like 64. CPU 64, 63. So that's a pretty good uh, show that we've got 10, 10 degrees Celsius is a hell of a lot. Really shows you if you are, if you are pushing this gaming, you know, that is the biggest thing you can do, I guess, apart from the rendering, which I wouldn't do. And I don't really game on it that much either, but when I'm traveling, uh, it's just really good to, to, to do this mod. I hope this is helpful. If you've made it this far, you should definitely have a play. I say, if you're just pushing the voltages down in this tool, you really can't hurt anything. So you don't really have a lot to use. And please leave a comment. I'd love to know. Uh, what settings people have, maybe po po post your uh, your values on different CPUs, it'd be really interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.